Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Today's phrase is fits of laughter. Fits of laughter. Now, this is something we say when we can't stop laughing at a particular situation. Something that's really made us laugh or something which has caught our attention. Now, I'll give you an example of this, which is very amusing. A few days ago, I went to the city and I went inside a coffee shop because I wanted to have a coffee. Now, there were three of us together and I went to the counter and I said to the barista, excuse me, I would like a coffee, please. And she responded with saying, excuse me, are you teacher Joseph? (laughs) And the three people that I was with immediately started to laugh and it created uh, a very nice jovial atmosphere Now, I'm not usually lost for words. Usually I'm able to keep very calm and not get emotional. But I couldn't stop laughing because my friends were laughing. So we were all in fits of laughter. Anyway, this barista, she said, oh, my mother loves your podcasts. I said, your mother? She said, yeah. Yeah, my mother listens to them all the time. I said, where's your mother from? And she told me the country that her mother comes from. And uh, we, we had a moment of laughter. And then she said, would you mind just recording a message from my mother? I'm sure she would be thrilled. And I said, okay, what's her name? And she gave me her mother's name. And I said, I'll do my opening. I'll say, welcome again with your mother's name to another Teacher Joseph podcast. So it was all arranged. We sat down. She got her mobile phone and she started recording. And of course, I had fits of laughter. Or maybe I can say a fit of laughter. And every time I tried to say, welcome again to another, I just started to laugh. (laughs) And I couldn't stop. So she said, let's try again when you've had your coffee. And maybe uh, things will be different then. I said, sure, I'll do it before uh, I leave. So eventually, after four or five times practicing, (laughs) I was able to record uh, this little message on the barista's mobile phone. It was very funny. And so I was in fits of laughter. You can also say fits of the giggles. I had fits of the giggles or a fit of the giggles. Some people say, without the article, I had fits of giggles. Giggles and laughter mean the same thing. If you have a moment where you can't stop laughing, you can also describe it in a funnier way by saying, I was or I am in stitches. Stitches. You know when you go to the hospital after an operation, and they have to close your skin by sewing your skin together. Just like in knitting or sewing, it's called stitching. And that's the verb to stitch, and what they make is stitches. So as an idiom, you can say, oh, I was in stitches. So with the barista and my friends, we were in stitches, in stitches. And I don't know where that phrase comes from, but I think the idea is that you're laughing so hard that your skin 
opened, something like that. So fits of laughter, uh, fits of the giggles, and I laughed so hard I was in stitches. We can also use the word fit in other ways. Now, just to give you a little bit of the meaning of fit, a fit is when your body moves uncontrollably. People with very serious medical conditions have fits, otherwise known as seizures. People with medical conditions such as epilepsy have fits. Their body starts to shake. It's a very serious condition, and if you do find people who do suffer from that, uh, do try to help them if they're experiencing problems. So a fit is when your body moves uncontrollably, but this time in a good way, with laughter. But we also have people who have fits of rage. Now, we spoke about this yesterday in our podcast because we used the phrasal verb to lash out. When someone is lashing out, they're having a fit of rage. For example, John went into fits of rage. You see, you can use it as a singular or plural in this case, fits of rage, or he had a fit of rage. There are other ways to use the word fit in a positive way, but because our body might not be moving so much, it's difficult to use fit because a fit would imply that the person is having a seizure of laughter or with a medical condition. Um, you can't really say fits of joy because when you're so happy, you don't usually move your body so much. You might be able to say a, a fit of excitement, but even that would mean the person was overly excited. For me personally, I don't really use it other than describing rage and laughter, but I might also say something like, oh, that shop was so expensive, I almost had a fit when they told me the cost of the coat. So you can hear there that I'm using fit in a different way. So there we are, fits of laughter, fits of rage, and almost having a fit. And remember as well, fits of the giggles. Yeah, so th this is a, a wonderful, um, wonderful phrase to use. Incredibly versatile. You can swap it around to different tenses with or without the article and still be understood. So I recommend that, uh, that uh, you try to practice with that. Actually, there's a headline in one of our local newspapers today about William and Kate, that's Prince and Princess William and Kate. Because it seems, and this is very funny, this had me in fits of laughter <laughs> uh, when I read it. Let's go through it. It says, William and Kate Waxwax are so bad that they left royal fans in stitches. And as we mentioned a moment ago, to be in stitches means to laugh so much. So the headline actually says that. It says that um, the royals uh, were in stitches. Well, actually, it's the royal fans who were in stitches or left in stitches. So it says, social media users have been left in fits of giggles after seeing some bizarre-looking waxwork dummies of Prince William and Kate Middleton in a Polish museum. So a waxwork dummy is those life-size 
um, models which look like people. You know, like Madame Tussauds in London is full of them. Uh, most places in the world have a waxworks museum. Candles are made of wax and models also, and they dress them up. It says here, Krakow's Museum's Royal Family Waxworks exhibit left fans unconvinced after many noticed that the statues of the Prince and Princess of Wales looked nothing like the royals. And then it describes them. It says that Princess Kate has straw-like hair and wore a very strong fake um, wig, you know, the false hair covering. And the future king looks very yellow. <laughs> so, yeah, it does look nothing like them. And his his gaze or his smile and look um, really is quite frightening, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and there's a picture here of someone uh, having his picture taken alongside these two members of the royal family in this waxwork uh, museum in Krakow. And I have to say, they look nothing like our royals. Uh, the woman, um, this is Princess Kate, the waxwork model uh, looks yellow, um, the clothes are convincing, but the face looks absolutely nothing like her. And, uh, yeah, it's just someone else completely. And the man who's supposed to represent Prince William, I mean, I say the man, but they are models. They're made of wax. They're not real. Uh, the male one, uh, yeah. <laughs> It looks absolutely nothing like him. It's really, really funny. Um, they both look more like, uh, well, she looks like a country and Western music star. And he looks like an evil dictator. <laughs> if you get the chance, do have a look at them. Um, and it goes on to say uh, that these bizarre looking wax models uh, which did not bear any resemblance to the prince and princess of Wales brought fits of laughter to the people. Um, another person who was walking around said that they looked like ghosts and a third person said um, we think this Polish wax museum has a great future but perhaps as a house of horror, <laughs> not as uh, not as a place where you can see convincing uh, wax figures. It goes on to say um, it's not just uh, Kate and William who have drawn uh, great criticism. I mean, it's not just the statues or the wax models of Kate and William um, who've created fits of giggles and criticism. Uh, it seems that there's also a statue of Beyonce uh, and fans have been saying on social media that the one in this museum <laughs> looks nothing like Beyonce. Um yeah, there's all kinds of comments on here, but there's no comments from the actual museum. So there we are. Um, yeah, by the way, speaking of creepy, another news story here in the UK today is all about a doll which is being sold. Uh, it's a second-hand doll being sold in a second-hand shop. And it's really creepy because the doll is... Well, it looks like the doll maybe from years in the past, and it's quite big. It is the size, I would say, of a four-year-old, 
and it's dressed up wearing adult clothes. That's the first thing that makes it look really creepy. And the second thing is the gaze. Um, it says here, the second-hand shop found itself in an odd situation when it had to address growing whispers about a doll in its window. Its lifelike appearance started rumors of it being haunted, and people began to be very afraid of it. Some people started a rumor saying that it comes to life at night and that the eyes of the thing follow everyone. Yeah, so things got so bad <laughs> that this shop had to put a sign under the doll which says, um, I am not creepy, only 90 pounds. I mean, that's really not going to help, is it? Um, she said she put the sign on the doll to clarify that it's harmless because many people thought that it was very, very creepy. Something which is creepy is something which makes you feel uncomfortable. Um, yeah, it's, I've got a close up of the face here. Gee, she really does look uncomfortable uh, and creepy. Um, Acknowledging the doll's unsettling appearance, the shop manager said, yeah, there's something about the eyes. They look human. Um, I think they were trying to make it look like a real child. No one seems to want to buy it. <laughs> well, I almost had a fit when I read that it was 90 pounds. But um, yeah, I, I don't think it's the actual doll. I think it's the size of it. It looks huge. I've never seen a doll which uh, is so big, you know, it looks like the whole size of a four or five year old dressed in adult clothes. That's what makes it look creepy. Yeah. Anyway, there we are. So fits of laughter, fits of the giggles. I hope you've enjoyed this. Let's talk again soon. See you. Bye.